and a warm welcome back to the Celtic Forever podcast. We're going to go over the Celtic and Hibs game on Wednesday night and we'll touch on the St Johnson game at the weekend as well. If you could just hit the like and subscribe button, we always start with that. If you can hit like and subscribe, we would appreciate that. And obviously, uh, this week's competition is name the mystery Celtic player that is on screen. All you have to do is name the mystery Celtic player on the screen. Up to three guesses per person. Leave your guesses in the comments section. Simple as that. To win the Henrik Larson Celtic Legends frame print. So that's the competition for this week. The draw will be made on uh, Sunday after the Kamalak game. And it's a UK entry only. All right, John. Let's have a wee touch on the St Johnston game at the weekend there. Just happy to get the game over and done me. Move out there, John. Three points and move on to the next game. That's the way I was looking at it. That's the way we look at every game, isn't it? Get three points in the bag, move on. Three points are in the bag. So, it's another challenge against Hibs. Last time we played them, we had a bad result. Nothing each at Easter Road. And they parked the bus, never came out the 18-yard box. Man, I'm expecting exactly the same the more. Says that about St yeah. Johnson as well, right enough, but they actually gave us a half-decent game on uh, Sunday there. Yeah, well, the the Hibs have actually, I've not beat them in two games. So we'll go into the form a wee bit later. But I think the game before the draw this season was the six, the six, the 4-2 game where they beat us when it meant nothing. So we've not actually beat them in two games. But we'll get into that John, a wee bit later on. The St Johnston game, uh, it was just a scrappy affair, John. It went to, it was, uh, we played well for half an hour in the full game, but... We're going to start hitting this form again, I think, John. What do you, what do you think? Oh, well, Brendan wasn't happy, so... Like, we've got to start the game the more the way we finished the game against St Johnston. I've said that a few times this season. We've got to start the game the way we finished against whatever team, you know. I think we've got to uh, try and start stronger rather than finish stronger because it puts you under a lot of pressure, doesn't it? It does, yeah. And obviously, Hibs are in form as well, don't they, John? They are... They're, they're in a wee bit of form, we'll touch on that in a couple of minutes. Uh, but before we go into the Hibs game, John, just a wee mention on the Celtic players going to the the local Cel- uh, the local sick kids hospital and donating a £10,000 cheque. Pic- did you see the picture of that, John, the Celtic players uh, visiting the, the sick kids hospital? No, I don't I don't catch up with any of that kind of stuff, Sander, I don't keep an eye on it. But uh, whenever I have seen it, aye, it's a heartwarming moment, isn't it? It's always heartwarming moments. I'll have a wee look into yeah. it later, actually. Yeah, yeah, that was well done to the boys. Uh, um, and donating the cheque as well. That was obviously Celtic that done that. So well done to the players and Celtic Football Club for doing that. A really nice touch there, especially at this time of the year. Uh, let's get into the game then, John. We'll start off for the referee. For, uh, sorry, Wednesday, sorry, is John Beaton. He's the referee, so don't expect any... Uh, favours there. <laughs> Not that we ever do expect any favours, but John Beaton is the referee. Uh, Celtic are putting on a pay-per-view service for the game in the Mora John, so if you want to watch the game, you know, I think it's 750 pay-per-view, something like that. But I didn't look into the price. The game, John, so a couple of his players to keep your eye on. Doyle Hayes, Newell, Johan, Martin Boyle, Doyle. They've got a few half-decent players in their squad, haven't they? They certainly have, bye. I always liked Martin I Boyle. I thought uh, I think he's a half decent player. And mm-hmm. Big Doyle, he's a bit of a hit and miss kind of player. Uh, but yes, he, he is half decent. He is one worth watching, you know. Yeah, as you said a couple of minutes ago, they always, always give us a very difficult game. Hips. Whether it's a Celtic Park or Easter Road, they're always giving us a, a, a tough, tough game, aren't they? That's the same for every team in the league, though. Celtic are the team to beat. We keep saying mm-hmm. it. They don't try as hard against other mob because they're insignificant. Who are they? What have they won? You know what I mean? They're just uh, runners-up. That's all they are. It's not a big scalp beating a runner-up. No, that's it's, a it. cha- it's the champions that are the big scalps, under. That's it, John. That's it. Aye, they're, they're wanting that on their CV, ain't they? I was, I, I was part of the team that beat Celtic. Yeah, you're right. So how do you think Nick Montgomery is going to... Uh, line up against this John Jenkins it's going to be attacking defensive counter attack would you think what's your thoughts there 
Well, if it's anything like the way they lined up at Easter Road, then we can expect one of the nervy games. I'm hoping he sends them out to attack. Like, we don't know what he's going to do, but I'm hoping he sends them out to attack because it's going to leave Celtic a lot of space to exploit, and that's, that's what I like. And teams know that. If they attack Celtic, they're going to be left exposed at the back, so... Aye, that's what I'm hoping. I hope that he sends out an attacking team. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened in the game. I don't want to go back, but that's the game against St. Johnson at the weekend. So we're pushing forward for that equaliser and we broke free, really. There was nobody near the Celtic players and go that third goal. So you're right, that's that's exactly what's happening. Uh, we touch on the fitness, the players, the Parma injury, John. It's it's, it's just a... It was just a... a uh, Cramp, it was just cramp, so it wasn't a hamstring injury, John. So, you should be okay for tomorrow. I think you said that anyway, didn't you? Aye, I had to mute there. I was tacky the sneezes there while you were talking. <laughs> yeah. Aye, I can't. I that. Before you go, John, before you go, on, I can't sneeze if there's even a slight movement. I've got to have total silence when I sneeze, so you must be quite good at sneezing. If there's any movement or light or a movement of Anything that puts me off a sneeze, I just kind of do it and it never comes back again. It never comes back again, it's gone. Anyway, right. we diverse. On you go, John, sorry. Right. <laughs> when I sneeze, it blows the hair out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> you must do a lot of sneezing then. That body patch is getting bigger every winter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I forget where we were there. Aye, <laughs> the injury to Ab- uh, Abada. Goodness sake. Uh, the Abadi, uh, injury to Palmer. Aye. What were you saying there, John? Sorry. Uh, no, I, I said that on Sunday. It, it just looked like he had a bit of cramp. He was okay at the end. He was walking about and all that. So, Aye, I thought he'd be okay for the game. And that's good news. Let's hope he has a better game, actually. Let's hope every single player has listened to Bren- Brendan. When he says it's the angriest he's ever been in his time as a manager. And I don't blame him because that uh, first half against St. Johnson was pitiful, wasn't it? That's the worst I've seen Celtic playing in a long time. But. Aye, uh, but. Yes, yeah, you're right. It's, Brendan won't allow it to go back the way, John. He just won't allow it. You know, we're, start, we're still unbeaten in the league, as I've, I keep saying. I know I keep saying that. So, we kind of be. Uh, I'm not talking about you or me, I'm talking about in general. We can't be too, be too upset. We're still unbeaten. We're still eight points clear at the top of the league. But it's the performances that are they're not great, are they? They've not been great all season, maybe apart from the Aberdeen game and the, the Livingston game, possibly. But it's not been great. And obviously the game against Rangers at Ibrox. Mm-hmm. Uh, the banner at the bottom there, John, says, should Awata start? The reason why I'm saying that is because... When he pushed Callum up a wee bit and Awata came on and sat in McGregor's place, we were a different team, weren't we? So do you think Awata should be getting more game time and maybe even starting the game against Hibs on Wednesday? Well, you know I'm a one for, I'm an advocate of Awata. I think he's a fantastic player. I say it all the time, why is he no starting? So, I I totally agree. Give him a start. Put him in the, the McGregor's position and uh, put McGregor up one. Because I think that's where McGregor's most effective. Don't get me wrong, he's he's great when he plays the new McGregor. But I think you get more out of him when he plays a wee bit further forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Another the other option is uh, Bernardo, who seems to be getting kept for uh, Champions League games for some reason. Yes, he plays a lot in the Champions League. Yeah, so far, he's... I think he's played them all. It's, it's, uh, it's, it, which is strange because you've got a player like Awata on the bench, John, and he's not even getting used as a sub. Uh, I just find it strange. Maybe Brendan's seen something different in the training. I, I don't know. I also don't know. Nobody knows. But he came on again on uh, Sunday there, John, and he, he changed the game. You know, he never personally changed the game, but the flow of the game totally changed when he got put into McGregor's position and McGregor was moved up. It was just a diff- it was a different game we were watching, I thought. No, yeah, absolutely. I love the water. I think he's a great player. And he had his assist for Forrest as well, didn't he? 
No, I did it. Was that a lot of was it? I'm not sure. I didn't. I didn't really pay attention. I was just glad to get. It's like you say. I was just glad to get the full time whistle and get out of there with the three points. I, I didn't know who set up the forest goal. What was no, it, it was a lot. Was that a lot? Was it right? Okay. Yeah, well, there you go, an assist as well. So, yeah, get him on against Hibs. Get Callum put into the Turnbull position, John, and we'll take it for there. That's the way you look until these injuries start coming back. And touching on the injuries, John, there'll be better news today. Maida and Antatati are both ahead of schedule, so that's good news. And both should be fit for the Rangers game at the end of the month. So that's a wee bit better news on the injury front, I, I think, isn't it? Aye, uh, you, th- you think of the game against them has been a long way away, but it's only a couple of weeks, really, three weeks. Whatever. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Three weeks, aye. Yep. So three, three, weeks Saturday, three weeks on Saturday. Three weeks on Saturday, John. Three weeks aye, on Saturday. It's no long. And these games, uh, they come around fast, don't they? One minute you're thinking it's three weeks away, next minute you're playing them. Uh, yeah. Obviously, we're not going to look that far ahead, but that's one I'm looking forward to. Obviously, they've been making rumblings about the allocation. It's, again, be bits and bobs in the news about them still pushing to get some fans into Celtic Park, but it's never going to happen, John, is it? No. no the only way that's going to happen is if, if they change uh, what they started, basically. And they started it. Only them can end it. Celtic's only following suit, remember. If you want to start trouble by doing stuff like that, You've got to be prepared to be the man and end it and give Celtic back their full allocation. Otherwise, I'm happy. No fans that they're grown and no fans that they're grown for them. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I can't have it both ways. I'd like to see the Celtic fans back in Ibrox, John. And I know you're the same. Uh, so that would mean them coming back to Celtic Park. So I'd like to see that return back with a as you say, the full allocation. It's got to be the full allocation. So until it gets to that point, it's no fans at either ground, isn't it? So, yeah, I agree with you there, John. Back to the Hibs game. Back to the Hibs game, John. Uh, that's going to be a bit of the bet. We'll get that out of the road now, right? A wee bit of, I like to we touch on this. Gamble responsibly, obviously, if you're going to put a bet on anything that John or myself says, John. So the betting's r- roughly the same as the Motherwell game, John. 1 to 4 Celtic, 6 to 1 the draw, and 13 to 1 a Hibs win. And before we move on, I said, John, just to recap on the, the wee bookmaker bit that we had for the St Johnston game, I said it was 12 to 1 the draw, but it was 12 to 1 the 1 each draw. John, I said it was a 1 each draw that was 12 to 1, no the, any draw, just in case anybody was thinking they were getting 12 to 1 on a draw there. Anyway, so. 13 to 1 a Hibs win, John. 1 to 4 Celtic, 6 to 1 the draw. It's just the same odds as the Murrow game, isn't it? Very similar Very odds in other games. games. I was getting a wee bit of feedback here, Xander. Yeah, I can't hear it this side, John. You sound okay. Ah, we'll okay, continue man. on. We'll continue on. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the the, the, the betting the betting and the odds. 1 to 4. It's, you know. The days of Celtic being 1-7 and 1-8 are gone, aren't they? Aye, for now. Aye. I'm looking forward to the January transfer happening because Celtic really need to strengthen in several positions of that team. Uh, you might see the odds changing after that because we really do need uh, some more strength in there. A wee bit more experience. We definitely need another left-back. On top about all this, while we're talking about odds, because once we strengthen the team, the odds will start being a bit more favourable, I think. But right now, like you're saying, I the odds are uh, one to four for a Celtic win at Celtic Park. I don't know. It's kind of I would kind of expect that anyway. To be honest with you, Xander. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I the odds used to be slightly better, but you know, there were no we're no sitting third in the league or second in the league, John. We're well clear at the top, so. Yeah, the, the odds should be a wee bit better, but obviously the, the bookies don't think we're playing that way. Well, they obviously think we're playing well, but, you know, we're no demolishing teams the way we used to, I suppose. That's maybe the way they're looking at it. Uh, Kyogo, 72 for the first goal. O five 5 to 1. O'Reilly, 13 to 2. Parma, 13 to 2, John. Uh, similar odds as before, I suppose, from about the 
41 for Kyogo and 71 for O'Reilly and Palmer. Yeah. Yeah, so don't know where you're going to make a bit of money there is if you say Palmer to score the first goal and Celtic to win 2-0, something like that. But you know, it's the only way you're going to make a couple of pounds, I suppose. Correct score, John. 2-0 is 61. 3-0, 71. 2-1 is 72. 3-1 is 21. And another each draw is 25-1. to 1. But there's goals in both teams, isn't there? Aye, twenty-five to one for a nothing each draw. Mm-hmm. That's good odds, by the way. No, nothing each. We chance. You think there's a wee chance they could cancel each other out? No, be nothing each. I can't see it myself. Obviously, you can't see it either. But that's good odds, isn't it? Twenty-five to one, nothing each. Aye, it's not a case I can't see it. I mean, I'm not going to say it's going to be nothing each. But aye, there is a chance that could happen. But we've seen how teams play at Celtic Park under these days. Yeah. So there yeah. is a, a wee chance that could happen, but I'm expecting a lot more for Celtic against Hibs than what we've seen recently. I'm hoping Brendan's instilled that into them, how important it is to be a Celtic player and how the league is the most important thing in their calendar year. It's got to be the league. That's all I've ever got in my mind is the league. Oh, I definitely, 100%. Like it's got to be the number one prior- priority, and I think it is anyway, but that's got to be the case every single season. Europe is just a wee bonus. It gets you a bit of extra cash in the bank. That's all that is. So, well, that's what it is just now anyway. Um, but back to the betting, John Kyogo, 72 to score the first goal. The wee man's no hitting the net just now, is he? No. He's no scored in a wee while, a couple of games in. What was the last goal he scored? We were talking about it the last. Aberdeen, wasn't it? He scored against Aberdeen. Um, Aye. He's still playing well, though. That's the thing with Kyogo. He's still playing pretty well. It's not as if he's a really bad player. He's getting into all the right positions. He's missing a lot of easy chances. When the day comes his way, maybe he's, looks, he doesn't get that many chances in front of goal when these teams are defending like that. It's hard to get a a low cross in when the defence is like that into it, but Kyogo thrives on that, the low cross. He's not going to be a six-foot-plus defender to a header, so ah, it's got to but be then, across the goal for Kyogo, or cut back. But then there was the, the perfectly placed pass for McGregor at the weekend there, Straight to Kyogo, what a ball that was, and he, he just hit it straight to the keeper. So the B man just needs a wee bit more confidence than now, and I'm sure he'll find, I'm sure he'll find that once he starts hitting the ball into the back of the net again, John. Uh, no worries there with Kyogo, no worries whatsoever. The B man will be okay. Matt O'Reilly, John, 13 to 2 to score the first goal after that scream at the weekend. That'd be quite a good bet, I think, at 13 to 2. Ah, it's no bad, is it? 13 to 2. That's good odds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Matt O'Reilly to score their first goal and Celtic to win 2 nothing. You up a few quid there. If you put a V5 on it, you bump it up to about 100 quid if you if that, if that came in. Anyway, head to head, John. The form against each other the last six, right? This is interesting. So the last time we played them, obviously, nothing each Easter Road. After them getting gubbed with Rangers at uh, Ibrox, they held us to a draw Easter Road. Uh, then there was a game last season, 4-2, when it meant nothing, like I said before. That was uh, the end of the season game, where they were treating it like a World Cup final. Uh, then it was a 3-1 win for Celtic at home. Then a 4-0 win for Celtic at Easter Road. Then a 6-1 win for Celtic at home. And then another nothing each draw at Easter Road. So four minutes up and down there, John. It's, it's, one, it's a game we need to be wary in, I think, and... Uh, and put in a top class performance to beat them, I think. I well, but just a performance that's worthy of the name Glasgow Celtic. That kind of performance. Mm-hmm. That's what you need, and that's what we need every week now. Every one of the players needs to know what it is to play for Celtic, and I'm sure most of them do. I mean, they're allowed be off days and bad spells. Every team gets through wee bad spells, and Celtic's no different. But we need to start hitting top form especially coming up to the end of the month for the Derby game. Definitely, John. As you say, yeah, every team goes through blips. So they're the champions for a reason, John, two years in a row. 
Uh, unbeaten in the league. I think I've said that before, Ted. <laughs> but there are unbeaten in the league. Uh, champions, like, as I say. Um, the only black this season was getting knocked out of the cup, I suppose, wasn't it? Uh, so, Hibs, John, they've won the last three games. They've actually won the last three games. So, uh, they're definitely on a wee bit of form. And they obviously just beat Aberdeen at the weekend, 2 nothing there as well. So, they're... Yeah, they're on form. It's it's one it's one we're going to, as I say, we're gonna to have to be on top for them to beat them, I think. But as I said to you five minutes ago, John, how do you think the manager Nick Montgomery's gonna play, John? Do you think he's gonna defend? Do you think he's actually gonna set his men behind the ball? I don't know, Xander. It's, it's hard to say because we don't watch Hibs, but I if they beat Aberdeen two nothing at the weekend, they're just back for Europe really, and they only had two days rest, Aberdeen. And we only had two days rest as well the last time we played them, remember. We were just back for Europe. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know how he's going to send his team. I'm expecting pretty much the same as the Motherwell game and the St. Johnson game at Park Kid. Right. Fair enough, John. Habs are fifth in the league. Uh, they're sitting there with 21 points. So they're doing not too bad. And as I say, they are on for them. So, um, hopefully we get a result tomorrow, obviously. We'll wrap up the betting there, John. What's your one to your loving prediction team lineup then? What are you thinking? Do you think oh, Awata will get into the team? Do you think he'll get into that team, John? What's your one to your loving? Well, Hart, Carter Vickers, Liam Scales, Greg Taylor, Alistair Johnson, Callum McGregor, Matt O'Reilly, and I think he's going to start with. I'm going to see Awata. I'm going to see he's going right. to start with Awata, I'm sure. Brendan must have looked at that on Sunday and thought, that's the way we should be playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if they, if they if they come out the traps like that, we are water in the team, then it's going to be hard to push him out of the team because he is a, a te- technically gifted wee player, very talented. He was Japan's player of the season last season. Yeah. Um, he's also strong so, and physical. He's, he's quite a strong player as well. Aye, aye. Him and Tatty are strong physical players too, great players there. Uh, so I so let's hope he starts with a water. Or it could be Turnbull. One or the other. I'll just say a water right now because that's what I, that's what I want the starting lineup to be. Uh, and up front it's just gonna be the same three. It's it's gonna be Kyogo up front, uh, Palmer on the left. Well, I don't know, Yang had a bad game on Sunday. So maybe he'll start sure. with Tillio. Maybe make he t- Tillio a wee start. Or they might start with James Forrest on the right, who also played well, I thought, when he came mm. on. So, I See, don't know. It's, go. it's a bit tougher. Yep, it's a bit tougher to pick the starting 11 than now. I, I don't know. I'm going to go for just Kyogo, Palmer and James Forrest. Yeah. Okay, mate. Did you notice that Awata had a haircut? Looks, looks lovely, doesn't it? Looks lovely. <laughs> right. I, t- I tell you, I know it's had a haircut. Stevie, mate. <laughs> he used to have the long dreadlocks, no dreadlocks, but the long, long hair and the ponytail, and now he's gone baldy. Yeah, baldy uh, with a beard. He's turned his head upside down. <laughs> That's the stress of playing for St. Johnson, though, that causes that. Uh, ah, <laughs> my predicted 11, John, I'm going to go, obviously, the same old, same old, more or less in defence, heart. Greg Taylor, Liam Scales, Carter Vickers, Alistair Johnson. I think he's going to put Awata in McGregor's place, push McGregor up, and Matt O'Reilly. On the wing, we're going to have Palmer. Kyle will go up front, and I think he's going to put Mikey Johnston on the right, John. So that's my start in the living. Would you well, like to see Johnston start? I don't know. If he's going to put anybody on the right, Instead of Yang, I'd rather see Forrest on the right because that's where he's, you get the most of him. He played on the left recently and he was brutal on the left. Um, that was against uh, Lazio, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. That, if he's going to start with anybody on the right, if it's not going to be Yang, I think it might possibly be James Forrest. Right. Okay. You've also you've also got Tilly over there who's who looked very pacey and very direct. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but it was the, the reason why I picked Johnson is the difference he made against Johnson on Sunday. 
as soon as that boy came on, he changed the game as well. Direct, running at players, twisting and turning, taking them to the byline, getting his crosses into the box. The wee guy was just brilliant. What a difference he made. So I sort of hope that he starts with it. I don't think I'd ever say this because it looked as though his career was over at Celtic. But I want him to start with Johnston if he's going to be that direct. I again, but he's, he's more effective on uh, the left, Mikey Johnson. Mm-hmm. I so thought he linked up well with Alistair Johnson. I thought yeah, but he linked up well with Alistair on that side. So uh, he looked okay out there. But as I know what you're saying that he's, he is more or less a left sided winger, isn't he? Um, but we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see what Brendan does on Wednesday night, John. That's that's we'll wait and see. Uh, okay. Anything else you want to add about the game, John? About the game on Wednesday night? Any more, any more to add? No, not really. No, I've just... Uh, you see what the crowd's like, the more... Aye, uh, with the, the freezing weather, the more I just hope there's a... a good turnout, the more... But a lot of people still at Christmas shopping and stuff. It's that, it's that kind of time of the year, isn't it? And Celtic Park looks a wee bit emptier than normal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, yeah. So I'm hoping for a good turn at the Mora. Maybe a full a full house would be good to see. Yeah. Think, yeah. Sorry, can hear. Yeah. Sorry if you can hear rattling in the background, John. There's, I'm I'm sitting in the car and there's guys working in scaffolding. That's what the banging is. <laughs> Very professionally. Uh, aye, yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, the co- the the comments. No, yet. Yeah. Score prediction. Sorry, John. Oh, let's see if you can. Let's see if you can pull it back to five three. What's your score prediction for the Mora? I'm gonna say four one Celtic. Four one. I'd love a four one. Nice and convincing. Nice and easy to watch. No pulling your hair out and like the St Johnson game. That was. Yeah, it was tough to watch. Oh, yeah, a nice relaxing 4 1, John. I take it all day long. I'm going to say, I don't think it'll be as comfortable as that. Just because of the form the Hibs are on just now, I think they're you know, beating Aberdeen and a couple of other good results. That's, <sighs> I don't know. 2 0. 2 0 to Celtic. I'm not going to give Hibs the. The privilege of a goal at Celtic Park. So I'm going to say 2 0 to Celtic, John. Tricky, sticky game. It's difficult to break down. Hibbs hitting us on the counter attack, but we still come out with a 2 0, which would keep his eight points clear because, same as the game at the weekend against St. Mirren and Rangers, John, I can't see Hearts take it, taking anything off Rangers. Can you? No, absolutely not. No. But you never know. I always say that, you just never know. It's 11 against 11, you just don't know what can happen. But uh, no, I think the Mora's game, I think I think Celtic will come fast out the traps. If we come fast out the traps and get an early goal, I think it could be anything Celtic want it to be. Yeah. And as you said earlier, John, if the players take in what Brendan was saying at halftime against St Johnston, you'll see a different Celtic, I think. On, on Wednesday, I think you'll see a different, more direct, free flowing Celtic because the manager wasn't happy, and I think the players will take that on board because it's the same mirror, it's the same players that won the league. So the pack with ability, John, they just need to listen to the manager and do what the manager says. It's as simple as that. Right, absolutely. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping for. Okay, John. <clears throat> okay, Doc. We'll wrap that up here then, John. So, good luck to Celtic on Wednesday. Uh, don't care what the score is, to be honest with you, as long as we come out of there with the three points on Wednesday night. Comments, John, is there any comments for us this time? Aye, a lot of them just guesses for the, the competition, but I'll just read a few out here. Aye, go U- for it. Aye. Udif says, definitely need a better left back and Kyogo will get back to scoring when we get Maeda and Hatati back. Those three are our best attacking players. Palmer on the left, Maida on the right, Kugo up front. Unstoppable in domestic games. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, we're missing that, you know, three-pronged attack, aren't we? We're missing that, you know, fluency up there. The, the sort of our reserve and substitute players are trying their best just now, but 
the sooner we get our injured players fatter the better. Yeah, totally agree, Yudi. Totally agree. Aye, I don't know if that's why Kugel's no scoring. Then again, he's, he seems to be more competent with uh, my either in the team Kugel, did not he? Hmm. No, he does. Aye. He seems to be able to read what me my either's going to do and his runs and things like that. So he's yeah, he's good wee partnership with the two up there. Uh, aye. We need to be, we need to play on without them, John. They're all injured. Aye. That's it. And he's even better when Hitachi's there. But anyway. Ghost Tracker, this is a tough competition, man. I'll say Cascarino, Wayne Biggins, and Mike, Ga Mike Galloway. Great one in pod, lads. Well, we're not going to uh, say but I am I not, you I'm not. You're right, John. We're not going to say if it's right or wrong, but it's, it's the right era. It's the right era, the three players. So it could easily be one of them. Yep, could easily be one of them. Good luck, ah. Ghost Tracker. Uh Prophets go Peter Grant, Roy Aiken and Derek White for my first three shots. You're only allowed three shots, Prophet. Don't get greedy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd seen that, actually. I'd seen that for Prophet. Aye. Aye, three guesses, Prophet. That's it. It's a limit this time, buddy. Good luck with your guesses anyway. Good luck. All the best. And uh, it says uh, Stephen McLean was sacked in November. So he must have got the job last week. Talk about Craig Levine. St. Johnson? Oh, aye, Levine. Aye. I, started, I didn't even look into that. Just, it was a surprise when I seen him there. So, aye, it's, it's, if it was last week, it was last week. Uh, never done them any good. They still never beat us. So. <laughs> aye. No, well, I mean, so. I say, oh, I say so on Sunday, it was good to see him back, Craig Levine, because I know he had a uh, bad health, he had a heart attack and all that. So, it's good to see him back in coaching. Aye. Aye, well, good luck to him. Aye, that's it. That's it. Your health comes first, doesn't it, John? That's the same with everybody. Your health comes aye. first. Yeah, aye, aye. absolutely, Xander. So good luck to Craig, Craig, Craig Levine. It's good to see him back in the manager hot seat for a team. So well done him yeah, getting good. back after his heart attack. Yeah, good luck to him. And saying that, he's in the most stressful job possible. So maybe he's in the right job. Maybe he should be doing something else. Less stressful if he's already had a heart attack. But anyway, any other comments, John? Right. We would never buy, sorry, we would never sell our club for a pound. My three ga guesses are Henry Larson, Andres Tom and Jack, Jackie McNamara. You're in the wrong era there. We would never sell a club for a pound. Yeah, what I'm going to do, we would never sell a club, John's government, are our three guesses. Uh, it's just a must have been having three guesses and with, uh, looking right into it. So, yeah, have another three guesses, buddy, and I'll, I'll raise the three for the comment section. So have another wee guess. I'm generous aye, today, John. I'm generous. I'm feeling generous. Aye. Now, well, he's, if he's in the totally wrong era, then aye, he should have another guess. But uh, So have another go. We would never sell a club for a pound. Anyway, yeah. Paul McComb thinks it's Mick McCarthy, Frank McAvenny and Andy Lynch. Is Andy Lynch not a boxer? I've never heard of Andy Lynch. There was a Lynch at Celtic. I can't remember what his first name was. I need to look into that. But if that's your three guesses, that's your three guesses. Good luck. Good luck to everybody that's having these guesses. We appreciate these comments coming in. Uh, anywhere, yeah. John? Is there anywhere? Because I've not looked. I've not really looked. Andy Lynch. I know, I know the name. I've just always associated that name, Lynch, with a boxer for some reason. I can't remember an Andy Lynch playing for Celtic, mind you. And I still don't know who the, the competition is, by the way. I don't even know. Uh Mm -hmm. And Paul went on to say, great pod, lads. Great goal, Jamesy. When was the last time we scored from a corner, lads? Well, that's true. We've been pretty bad for all set pieces, I think, Paul. Corner kicks, free kicks, throw-ins. We keep getting the ball away for throw-ins and stuff. So all set pieces are pretty poor, I think, Paul. Yeah, we need to improve there. We need to get them into the training ground and get these free kicks and corner kicks. We have a wee bit more whip. That's what I, that's what I would say on that. Uh, uh, anything else, John? Anything else? Yeah. Drunk Leprechaun says that was another frustration watch again. You could see Brendan was fuming. He's not happy, but three points will do. Hail, hail. Absolutely agree. Yeah, totally agree, John. And did Drunk Leprechaun have any guesses in the competition? I'm just sc scrolling down to see if he's left another. Aye. I think he's having a wee bit of tongue in cheek go here. Listen, drunk leprechaun. See, see if you want. See if you want to have a go. Have a proper go without uh, 
efforts like that. <laughs> He thinks this, he doesn't think he's just having a laugh. I'm only kidding, drunk with you, by the way. You're allowed to have a laugh. He thinks it's Reggie Blinker, Bobo Baldy, and Mark Antoine Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I replied to him with that text. That was quite funny. But uh, yeah. I, I knew where it was going. He's just having a laugh. I know. Yeah, so have, a proper guess. have a proper guess. He's drunk. Guy. Have a proper guess. Uh, have a wee look at it. Because you could win it, drunk leprechaun. You could win this Henry Larson. Framed Legends print. So get your guess in the comments, buddy. Uh, Snap thinks it was John Collins, Phil O'Donnell, or Anton Rogan. Does Snap know the guy that won the competition? Aye. Has he not contacted you, John? Uh, I don't think so, no. I think somebody added me the other day. Snap, if you've won the, the print, could you contact me on the Messenger, on the Celtic Forever keep forgetting what it's called, Celtic Forever Facebook page. I don't use Facebook, by the way, as you know, Xander, I can't stand it. But, obviously, to give the wee uh, free prizes out, I need to have that page. So, yeah. anybody that's won a prize, contact me on the Celtic Forever Facebook page. Uh, he might have done, I'm sure somebody added added themselves yesterday, so I'll check that today. Anyway, snap, if it's you, send me a wee private message. Uh, John Collins, Phil O'Donnell and Anton Rogan. There's quite a lot of people who think it's Anton Rogan, by the way. Could be. It could well be. It might not be. I'm not saying a word. It's very tough. That's all I'll say. So thanks for the entry anyway, Snap 1888. As you'll find it you'll find it on Sunday what the answer is. There's a new guy, Proud Boy, says, All right, troops, and then he has his three guesses. He's at he says uh, Derek White, McGugan and Burns. Nice to see right, you, Proud luck. Boys. Yeah, thanks for the comment and good luck as well. Uh, Mad about football, thanks. Mark McNally, John Hewitt, and Derek White. Uh, good guesses coming in, by the way. Good guesses. Uh, Paul McCune just says, Hail, hail. And there's another one for Prophet saying, Where'd my players went to? He must have put something in and they've disappeared. I don't know. I don't know. But, not sure. But he's got his, he's got his guess at new, hasn't he? So. Uh, good luck. Good luck to him. Good luck to everybody that's entered. And. We'll go on that, John. We'll go into the competition. Very simple. Name the player on the screen. Simple as that. Who is the Celtic player on the screen? His face is covered. His number's covered. And all you have to do is have a guess in the comment section who you think it is. And we will allow you up to three guesses. The draw will be made. If, it, if there's more than one correct entry, the draw will be made on Sunday. If there's only one correct entry, then... It goes to that person. So, if there's multiple entries, John, and they're correct, it goes into a draw. So, leave your leave your competition entries in the comment section, and you'll find out on Sunday who the player is and who the winner is. And it's a UK entry only as well, John. Hi, and don't forget, Snap eighteen eighty eight. Get in touch touch with me on the Facebook. Uh, Celtic Forever page, you need to get in touch with me there. If you want to claim your wee prize, mate, just get in touch with me. Yeah, simple as that. Simple as that. And we'll give you we'll give you to uh, Saturday to do that. If we have not done it, we need to give it to somebody else, buddy. Um, all right, John, we're going to wrap it up there. That's 40 minutes already. Good luck to Celtic the Mora, John, because we're going to have to play really well the Mora to get a result against Hibs, I think. So good luck to the boys tomorrow. Good luck to Brendan. Stay safe, everybody that's going to the game tomorrow. Maybe a bit wet, a bit slippy, very cold as well. Wrap up well. Hope everybody enjoys the game that goes to the game. And three points is all we're looking for. Uh, hit like and subscribe as well, please. We would appreciate that. Hit that like button, especially. The last two podcasts have went down a wee bit again. So if you can hit the like button just to get these likes back up, keep the channel going. That's all we're looking for. Anything else to add before we go, John? No, all good to go, Xander. I'll let you get back to what you were doing. All right, John. I appreciate that, John. And we'll see you tomorrow for the post-match. Thanks, buddy. Speak to you later, Xander. Hail, hail. Hail, hail, buddy.